Shabbat Shalom, Miss Bakar. This is Maury Medea Yahoo. Want to welcome you to another live stream of My Living Branch. We are thankful for the Father that He's allowed us to sustain another week. Life is precious. And if you're here, you can be thankful. You can be all so thankful. So I played that song because, you know, we all face with adversities and different situations. And, and rest assured, no matter where you find yourself, he can find you. You know, keep your heart in the right place. Keep yourself clothed with righteousness. And no matter where you find yourself, he'll be there with you to sustain you, to encourage you so that you can move forward in his purpose and his will. Because, um, you know, as the day began, uh, the morning side of the day, or broker, I wasn't sure whether we'd have a broadcast today. But, you know, the father saw fit and he knew that, you know, somebody would need some encouragement today. And we're going to connect the pieces. We're going to connect the head and the body today. And make sure that you know what you need, what's going to keep you connected. Because you've, you've got to be fitted together, knitted together in love. So we are thankful, we are thankful, and we send, send heartfelt encouragement to, out to everyone. I just pray that the, the ruach of encouragement would overtake you on this Shabbat day. Because we've all faced where we need encouragement, where things are insurmountable. And all you see is the mountain. But just remember, if you just have the faith, the size of a mustard seed, research it. So it's not so much, you know, how big the mountain is. But if you can have pure faith, even in the smallest quantity, if it is nurtured and put in a righteous environment, it will flourish. And you will be able to speak to the mountain. So I encourage you today to continue living righteous, continue thinking righteous, continue abiding in righteousness. You know, and he's going to come. He's going to come when it's going to benefit his name the most. When he's going to get the most esteem. You don't have to hurry him, but just wait on him. Because when he that comes, when he actually does come and, and does not tarry, it's going to be a shakening. So be encouraged today and just know that who is watching over you. He's watching over you, sustaining you, protecting you, encouraging you. And. He just wants you to maintain a righteous life and have pure hands, clean hands. All right, so we're going to pray, Ms. Bakai. We're going to get into this lesson. We're going to finish up um, from last week. And then I think we're going to have, we're going to jump over to the Brit Hadashah because we need to go into that a little more in detail. Then we're going to, be ready to rock and roll uh, in the coming weeks with man being the head of woman. So let's pray. Father, I send encouragement 
And I send the Ruach of encouragement through your set apart spirit to everyone, Father, that's faced with adversity, their hearts are down, their Ruach is down, and they've been tread down, trotted on, or they've just been faced with things and they don't quite grasp what's going on. I pray, Father, that you would send something to cause them to lift up their heads, to lift up their eyes, lift up their heads, and see and know from whence come their help. Father, and be their help in the midst of everything they're faced with. I pray, Father, that you use what they're faced with to bring you esteem. That the enemy wasn't expecting a testimony to come forth. But through you, which all things are possible, you're going to cause a testimony to come forth that's going to confound the wicked. Going to confound the hands that were turned against them, that it will confound the naysayers. Because, Father, you are in control and you have absolute authority in every situation. And for that, we say thank you. Our hearts flutter at your presence. Our eyes, Father, they, they just, because of your esteem, we, we cannot even face it head on because it's so bright. And your words, Father, they, they sound like a shofar that when you speak into our lives, that it rattles everything around us. Now rise in our life and let our enemies be scattered in the name of Mashiach, Yahusha. I say, Torah Rabbah this day. Amen. And Amen. Hallelujah. So today we're going to we're going to have, um, you know, the, the tone today is different and you will notice it. So I'll let you pick up on it. And my encouragement is always make sure your fruit and your accountability, your classification always falls in the tree of life. There's temptation to pull you over to the tree of the knowledge and good and evil. But we want our words and actions, whether they be seen or unseen, to always fall under the tree of life. Okay, we always read this because it's, it's, it's our road map, map of where we're going. 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 3rd verse. And I wish you to know that the head of every man is the Messiah, and the head of woman is the man, and the head of Messiah is Elohim. So we've already covered Messiah and Elohim. Now we're working on the head of every man is the Messiah. And we're trying to connect, make sure there's a proper connecting point, points between, because remember, there's more than just um, a nerve connection that goes down from the head to the body. There's a blood connection that has to flow too. And it, it, it circles all around the body. Now, we want it to be unobstructed, whatever the connection is, whether it's through the, through the blood vessels, through the connecting tissue that holds it together, through the nerve, through the backbone, the spine that goes up, that connects into the head. No matter where the connecting points are, we want to make sure that they're 
firm, that they're sturdy, that they're stable, and that they are intact. Because if there's a disruption, then it's going to cause the body, in our case, the Messiah and man, to be off. And we don't want to be off. We want to make sure that we are operating appropriately and and, and functioning how it was created. Now, of course, we've, we've talked about the peripheral nervous system. We've talked about the central nervous system. If you missed that, Go back to um, some lessons before and catch up because all of this plays a part. And we're still asking the question, are you connected? Now, I will not cover this week because I want others to be able to get in on the conversation. I will repost it on the livingbranch.app site so that you can get in and give your experience with the Ruach HaKadosh. Uh, Haruach Hokadesh, the set apart spirit, because I, I want to know your experience and and how you acquainted. What what are the connecting points for you? What's been your experience? It might help someone else, and that's what we are in the business of helping. Now remember, all the connections work together. You know. Um, in particular, we're talking about the two essential things, the Ruach and the word of Elohim. They work in conjunction, the word and the spirit. You need both. You know, you can't be filled up with the word and lack the spirit. You need both. There needs to be a balance, you know, because they complement each other. They operate together. One's not contradicting the other. Yeah, I've seen I've seen that happen before, where people are saying things in the spirit. They're saying the spirit told them stuff to do, and I'm looking at the word and I'm like, mm, that ain't lining up. So we want to make sure that we are lining up. And we are proportionally intact. You know, that we're not off balance. Because sometimes people tend to lean one way or another. But we want to have harmony and perfect balance. So, let's look at another characteristic of the set-apart spirit. What it will do. Now, we haven't gotten... Like I said to the Brit Hotter Shop, we're going to get there. We're going to start that next week. But what I want to do is finish out some of the things, of some of the characteristics that we see in the Tanakh or the Old Testament. Transformation and renewal. The spirit is associated with spiritual transformation. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 through 27, The spirit is described as bringing about a change of heart and enabling obedience to Elohim's commands. So I want I always like to give a little bit more um, because it, it brings greater clarity. So let's look at Ezekiel 36, starting at verse 24. And I shall take you from among the nations. Now, has that happened? Okay, I'll let you answer that question. So it sounds prophetic because we are still scattered. Okay, so keep listening. I will take you from among the nations and I will gather you out of all the lands and I shall bring you into your own land. I shall sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. From all of your filthiness and from all your idols, I cleanse you. And I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I shall take away the heart of stone out of your flesh. And I shall give you a heart of flesh and put my spirit within you. 
And I shall cause you to walk in my laws and guard my right rulings and shall do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, who the father, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And you shall be my people, and I shall be your Elohim. Okay, now remember, the heart, the mind that is talking about has to be receptive. So we got the evidence here that is that is talking about the the um the word and the spirit because what is the heart designed for okay he's going to didn't he say he would write something on the tables of your heart okay remember daud also say he said thy word have i hid where in my heart that i might not sin against thee so there has to be a balance. If you're expecting to keep these commandments, you're going to need the word and you're going to need his spirit. There are many spirits out here. Some of them even try to imitate his spirit. But as time goes on, you can see that a spirit of self-righteousness was actually what was at work and not his spirit. Okay, it might have started off as his spirit, but then a spirit of self-righteousness creeped in. Okay, so let's keep going. Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 19. And I shall give them one heart and put a new spirit within you. And I shall take the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh so that they walk in my laws and guard my right rulings and shall do them and they shall be my people and I shall be their Elohim. So I pray that you are nurturing both components, the word of Elohim and his spirit. If you have not you know, if you're not sure, you need to start asking. Okay, don't 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 question, you know, sit back and wonder when you can ask. Because I would want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I have his spirit and not another spirit, because there are many spirits out here in the world. There's a spirit of the anti-Mashiach or anti-Christ as some call it. Anti-Messiah that's in operation. So you've got to make sure and everything, like when I'm looking out here, what do you see on the rise? What do you see that's, that's um, I, I saw a video that said, it was talking about what women are seeking now and it it talked about the new age and and witchcraft and they being witches i've seen more of that come on the scene than a little bit when a couple of hundred years ago you know if you even seemed like something like that was rising who they were they was ready to burn you ready to kill you but look at now if you speak out against it what what's happening it's accepted so the mass media is programming it tv uh you know whatever you want to call it they are saying it's acceptable everything is a a spell everything is magic everything you know, you can see all the symbols and everything there. They're propagating a different word. They're propagating a different spirit. That's not the spirit that we want. We don't want to operate in that spirit. We want the same spirit that came from our Elohim, Yahuwah Elohim. I hope somebody's hearing me. Okay, 
transformation and renewal. Okay, the spirit is associated with spiritual transformation. Okay, we read that. This is just a continuation. So we're jumping over to Ezekiel 37, verse 6. Okay, now I want you to notice, I want you to just read, read along with me with this story. Where, where there was something dead. Sometimes we have dead areas of our life. But how does revival come? How does life come again? Okay, let's see how it comes. And I shall put Shinu, Sinu on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put a spirit in you. Now, wh where is this? This is, everyone's heard about it, where Ezekiel is told to prophesy to the valley of dry bones. Okay, and if you read, it tells you exactly who the dry bones were. So let's just keep reading. And put a spirit in you, and you shall live. You shall know that I am Yahuwah. Here we go right here. And I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and there was a rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. That that support. Because a body has to have something. To. Keep it upright. There, there are a bunch of systems in the body. But everything. Is built on it's like a um, it's like the rod that goes up in the middle and everything else like on the menorah comes out that center rod and connected to that. And as I prophet, okay, eight verse, and I looked and saw sinew and flesh coming upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no spirit in them. He then said to me, prophesy to the spirit. Prophesy, son of man, and you shall say to the spirit, thus saith the master, Yahuwah, come from the four winds, O spirit, and breathe on these killed ones. So that they live. Something. So it, they were alive at one point. But something killed them. But notice what he's told to do. He's told to prophesy. To. And command the spirit. Prophesy to the spirit. See that? Thus said Master Yahuwah, come from the four winds, O Spirit, and breathe on these killed ones so that they live. And I prophesied as he commanded me, and the Spirit came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, a very great army. Oh, my. Just reminded me of Yahuwah, that army. Hmm. We going we might we're going to add, add this in the in the uh, site somewhere. <laughs> and he said to me, "Son of man, these bones are all the house of Israel. See, they say, old bones, our bones are dry, our ex." Our ex, uh, expectance, expectance has perished, and we ourselves have been cut off. Therefore prophesy, and you shall say to them, Thus said the Master Yahuwah, 
See, O oh my people, I am opening your burial sites and shall bring you up from your burial sites and shall bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah. When I open your burial sites, my people, and bring you up from your burial sites. And I shall put my spirit in you. And you shall live. And I sh shall settle you in your own land. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah. Know that I, Yahuwah, have spoken and have done it, declares Yahuwah. Does it sound futuristic? Are, are we in our own land now? Just, just curious. But how is all of this going to take place? Prophecy. The word of Elohim and his spirit. Renewal, transformation. If you want to change, if you give yourself, oh, I'm speaking to someone today. You've been struggling. But if you want to absolutely be changed, give yourself to the word of Elohim. Give yourself to Haruach Hokadesh and watch your life be transformed. You know what? I, I remember when, when I was working years, years ago. And there was a gentleman on the job. And someone had come to me and and I was I was in the I, I was just, I had come into the walk, I had been in you know, uh, in the walk for a couple of years and I was transitioning um, the assembly to a new location. And they began to tell me, you know, um, his his wife was actually in a, in a class with me. And she said, I want you to meet my husband. I said, okay. And, you know, people were telling me stories that the father had visited him. And for days on, I mean, he had been fasting and praying and days on end. Father, I mean, the father was just speaking through him continually. He, he could, it was just nonstop, weeks and weeks and weeks. So when I finally got a chance to meet him, we, we became good friends. He visited the uh, assembly uh, a couple of times. And Father showed me some different dreams um, that I was able to give to him and his wife, or Isha, and they were receptive. And, you know, they eventually moved, moved uh, from here to where the Father wanted them to be. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, when you get good people, you want to hold on to them, but the Father had a purpose for them and where they needed to go and be. So I'm not one to try to hold on to folks. I, I want them to fulfill the Father's purpose in their life. And I encourage that because I can remember when I, um, when I was trying to seek out my purpose, how people were so discouraging and, you know, many people try to put roadblocks and give you doubt about what the Father's telling you. But I said all that to say this, when, when we finally talked, you know, because the Ruach was working and I started to tell him about this walk and he, he was able to see my transformation, bam, you know, that I, I just went full force into it. And so he knew it was real. And he even told me that, you know, hey, I admire you. You know, you're not playing with this thing. So many people play with it, uncommitted. You know, but if you want absolute change, if you want to be transformed, you know, if you want to see your life 
just miraculously turn, get in tune with the word, get the Ruach Hokadesh working in your life, his set apart spirit, and see what happens. You talking about four winds working? Oh my goodness. People won't even recognize you. <laughs> Is that really him? I can't believe it. Okay, so guidance and direction. The spirit guided and directed and directed Elohim spirit, people. The spirit's presence led the Israelites through the wilderness and the spirit's guidance was sought for making decisions. So we just give you some, uh, this is when they were coming out of captivity, Nehemiah chapter nine, verse 18. Even when they made a molted calf for themselves and said, this is your mighty one that brought you up out of Mitzrayim, Egypt. And worked great blasphemies. Yet you, talking about Yahuwah, in your great compassion did not forsake them in the wilderness. The column of the cloud did not turn away from them by day to lead them on the way, nor the column of fire by night to give them light in the way they were to go. You also gave your good spirit to instruct them and did not withhold your manner from their mouth and gave them water for their thirst. Now, remember, what did he, what did he tell them? Now, look at the mouth. That's, that's words, okay? Man should not live by bread alone, by, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Elohim. And what is the spirit associated with? Remember, we had that before. If you believe on him, as the scriptures have said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And what, is, what was that referring to? The spirit. So you got to have a hunger. That's for the word. You got to have a thirst. That's for the spirit. Oh, I wish somebody was with me today. I wish somebody was hearing me today. Oh, yes, it's, 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 it's time to rejoice and sing. Somebody's going to hear this and it's going to be just what they need. So let's look at Psalms 143 verse 9. Deliver me from my enemies, O Yahuwah. I take refuge in you. Teach me to do your good pleasure. For you are my Elohim. Let your good spirit lead me in the land of straightness. For the sake of your name, O Yahuwah, revive me. Your righteousness bring my being out of distress. See how wonderful this is. Now, let me say this. When it comes to all of this, you have to have a willingness. You have to want this. See, a lot of people talk a good game. But when it comes to demonstrating and showing with a pure heart, pure mind, that they really desire this you know you can see that they don't want they don't put in the effort they just want it just dropped in the lamp they don't want to have restraint self-control when they know what's good you know you're not even supposed to let your 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 good be evil spoken of you know you have to put in the effort. You know, this has to become a part of you and what you desire. 
The problem is people desire their own ways. They're, they're, they're so hooked into their emotions and their feelings and their thoughts that it's hard for them to cast that aside to get just the pure, I need this. To get the unadulterated, I want this. To saying there's nothing. What shall separate me from the love of Elohim? He wants me to have his word. He wants me to be filled with his spirit. Why isn't it happening to me? Well, it's not his fault. Everything's on you. Do you really want it? Do you really desire it? Does it mean more than anything else in this world? Will you forsake all to get it? See, it's, it's a mindset. But we'll leave it there. Oh, yeah, this is where we're going. I, I, I found this, this picture in the background. I just like this picture. Because this, this is, I, I'm, I'm waiting and looking for a, f a fresh, fresh pouring. Yes, some fresh oil. Praise Yah. Restoration and revival. The spirit is linked to the restoration and revival of Elohim's people. The prophecies of Joel, or Yoel, and other passages speak of the spirit being poured out to bring renewal and spiritual awakening. So let's look here. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And after this, it shall be that I pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. OK, we've seen this before. Remember, we talked about Eldad, Medad, the 70 elders. What did they do? They prophesied. We've seen um, we've seen King uh, Shaul prophesied as King Saul. We've seen many others. That the Ruach moved upon. And your old men dream dreams and your young men see visions and also on the male servant. And on the female servants, I shall pour out my spirit in those days. There's no respect of person. He's pouring out. Doesn't mean your position changes. But he's giving it to us all. So that you can operate better in what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, it sets apart and sanctification. The spirit is associated with sanctification and setting apart. The spirit empowered individuals to live righteous. Now, of course, you got to want to live righteous. It ain't going to make you live righteous. But if that is in you, it's going to magnify it. So remember, it talks about, you know, Oh, magnify Yahuwah with me and let us exalt his name together. Where well, you got to start and then it multiplies. And set apart lives in accordance to Elohim's Torot. Torot is plural for Torah. Instructions. So look at Psalms 51 verse 10. Create in me a clean heart. O Yahuwah, and renew, now, now notice, okay, a clean heart. So there's some things, some words and things in my mind that have got to be erased and, and there's, there's got to be cleansed and replaced with the right thing, his word. Okay, you don't get clean by placing dirt on top of, uh, placing clean on top of dirt. You clean out. Then you put the new in. And see, many people want to just put the new in and keep the old there too. <laughs> but creating me a clean heart, 
O Elohim, renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your set apart spirit from me. Restore me to restore to me the joy of your deliverance or salvation and uphold me, noble spirit. Then jump down to uh, verse 15. Oh, Yahuwah, open my lips. And that my mouth declare your praise. For you do not desire slaughterings, or I would give it. You do not desire an ascending offering. The slaughterings of Elohim are a broken spirit and a heart broken and crushed. O Elohim, these you do not despise. So, in other words, if you're giving offerings or sac- slaughterings or sacrifices, for those to be accepted, there must be the right heart and spirit there, the right mind and the right spirit in place for those to be accepted. So in other words, the action has to correlate back to what's inside of you. So inside, if you're doing the action and you don't have the correct inside, then you might have not, you might have just saved your time and not done it at all. Because he's one that he's looking at your heart. And and this is why I keep coming back to that willingness. You got to want the word. Not only to be spoken in your life, you got to want to live it. And not only that, you need the Ruach Hokadesh. Haruach Hokadesh, you need it operating. To help sustain that word in you. Mm. Yes, yes. Okay, relationship with Yahuwah. The spirit facilitated a b- deeper relationship with Yahuwah. Psalms 5111 speaks of not losing the presence of the spirit underscoring the importance of communion with Elohim. So, but we're going to jump back. I want to show you in the Torah what type of relationship he's looking for. We read this. This is read every week. I know during the prayer. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1. And this is the command. The laws and right rulings which Yahuwah Elohim has commanded to teach you to do in the land which you are passing over to possess. So that you fear Yahuwah your Elohim to guard all his laws and his commands, which I command you and you and your sons and your grandsons all the days of your life and that your days be prolonged. And you shall hear, O Israel, and shall guard to do, that it may be well with you, and that you increase greatly as Yahuwah Elohim of your fathers has spoken to you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah Elohim is one, and you shall love Yahuwah your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your being, with all your might. And these words, which I command, which I'm commanding you today shall be in your heart and you shall impress them upon your children 
and shall speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. There is not a point that you shouldn't be speaking these things and impressing them on your children. The problem becomes how can you impress upon them was not impressed on you. Verse 8, and shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and you shall be as, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. But notice the key. You shall love. If we get that part right, when Mashiach talked about, if you love me, keep my commandments. See, if we can get the love part right, the problem becomes there's so many other things that we love more than we love his word. More than we love his presence, his spirit. So you, you just heard it here. Get that love right. Get it flowing. Okay. A promise of future blessings. Oh, everybody love this part. Many Tanakh or Old Testament passages, passages contain prophecy and promise, promises of a time when the Spirit's work would be more fulfill, fully realized, such as in the Messianic prophecies. So we'll, we'll go over these two verses in Isaiah and Ezekiel. But now hear, O Yaakov, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen, thus said Yahuwah, who made you and formed you from the womb, who helps you. For I pour water on the thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I pour my spirit on your seed and my blessing on your offspring. And they shall spring up among the grass like willows by the streams of water. One says, I belong to Yahuwah. Another calls himself by the name of Yaakov. Another writes with his hand upon Yahuwah and names by himself by the name of Israel. So we do have a, we got a bright future. But keep in mind, we got to live to see it. And we want to live righteously to see it in peace. Ezekiel 37, verse 14, and I shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall settle you in your own land and you shall know that I am Yahuwah, that I, Yahuwah, have spoken and I have done it, declares Yahuwah. Man, it's a great future ahead. So now we're down to the final piece. A couple of days ago, I was just pondering, pondering, pondering. I was like, mm, Father, Ruach. And just from nowhere, the thought just came. Look it up. Look up the letters. And when I looked it up, it started making even more sense than it's ever made. So I put it here, you know, Ru, then this right here comes before the head. So it's Ak, Ruach. So we have a Resh, a, some would say uh, a Wow, some say U, some say Vav, a Wa. Then a hit. 
So what is this? What is what is a a resh? It's the head or the beginning of. So I like these pictures. That's why um, the website is Hebrew Love Letters because it, it gives us a picture or the top of. But notice here, there's a connector. That's what the Vav does, the Vav or the Wa does. It's a connector. If it's, if it's at the beginning of a word, it's usually the word and. Okay, and within, so it's it's actually a um, a peg, a hook, or a nail. It joins, secure, adds, or pierce. So if think about a tent peg. So what does a tent peg do? It joins the tent to the ground to secure the tent. So here, the head is being secured to something. It's being connected to something. It's being joined to something. I want you to look at this. It's a fence. It can be a chamber. And where is the, if you were to think of a chamber, think about chamber, the body. Usually, usually in that sense, it would be referring to like your ribs in your body. What do your ribs do? They form a, a, a fence around all your vital organs, your heart your lungs, and <clears throat> give some protection to your stomach, your liver, kidneys. Chamber. So the Ruach, when we, when we think of it, and I've been telling you, connecting the head to the body. It's that element that we definitely need to connect, join, to secure. Mm, thank you, Father. And it's going to offer some protection if it's connected. It's going to lift you up. If connected, it makes sure you have a constant security mm, if it's operating there. But you got to have it operating. You got to have all the components there. All systems got to be working and in order. Righteous living, righteous life. Mm. Actions righteous. Words righteous, righteous thoughts. Let it be a sign for you. So are you connected? Hallelujah. I'm going to stop at this point. And I'm, I'm going to pray. Because somebody's going to hear this or somebody hears it right now. And they want to, an assurance of their connection. Father, in the name of Mashiach right now, Yahusha, Father Yahuwah, I'm asking you for those that from a pure heart are saying, I want to make sure I got the connection. Or even if they're saying, I don't have the connection. I want to make sure I got this connection. Father, give me the connection. I pray, Father, and agree and speak it right now that they would experience the Haruach Hokadesh like never before. 
that it would be a mighty rushing wind in their life. I call for the Ruach from the four corners, the four winds to blow in their life right now. Let there be a revival. Let there be an arising of your word and your spirit in their life like never before. Thank you, Father, for removing every hindrance. Thank you for shining a light on them like never before, that they will experience you in the fullness. Father, I pray that you block out naysayers. I pray that you block out wicked doctrine that will teach against we don't need your spirit anymore. And I pray that you would make them a witness that your spirit is still powerful. Put the word of Elohim in them. Let the word be stronger than ever. Let it be a sharp two-edged sword right now in the name of Mashiach Yahusha. I thank you, Father, for sending the encouragement that they need. Hallelujah. And let, may your name be esteemed through this prayer. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. And Amen. Hallelujah. So if you get a chance, just, just dwell on this. This connector. Thank you, Father. We're here to help. That's our purpose. Here to encourage. We're here to do the Father's work. So you know the focus. Fear of Elohim. If you haven't forgot, you got to be accountable. We can't escape it. It's all one package. It's a package deal. It's all or none. Ain't no partials here. So I, I I did the prayer at the point that where I saw the father was moving so the prayer could be effective. You know, not putting it off. Sometimes we, you know, want we we in our slides and we wanna okay, my slides, I, I I'll get to the prayer. But pray now. You, you pray at a height when, you, when it's most effective and not, not wait. See, I, I'm, not, I'm not the one that's driving the car. He is. So I'm taking my directions from him. So if you have prayer requests, send those prayer requests to mlb at privatemail.com. And I have some good news. We will be bringing... Um, Back online, the um, mylivingbranch.org. It'll be over the next couple of weeks. Um, we'll get that back up and running. So we'll also, we'll probably put that email address back, info at mylivingbranch.org. But don't send none, nothing there yet. I'll let you know when to send it, you know, when, when the email. And this one will still be available but we'll bring the My Living Branch email back into full force. All righty. So if you need bookmarkers, bookmarkers.club, hey, and check out Yahuwah.army. We over the course of time, we're gonna steadily, we're steadily gonna ramp this up. So just just be patient and keep a watch out. Because when when it comes when it comes on board, you're gonna know it. Because he's gonna build an army. Okay, and remember Hebrew Passover story. Pesach will be here before you know it. So you still can, you know, get it. Um, this for your kids or children to tr teach and train them. It's just another tool. There are many tools out there. So I'm just you know offering you one that will be helpful. All righty, so if you haven't, send up your prayers for us. You know, that's what we desire, that we will stay in tune, do his will, do his purpose. 
And if you haven't, jump over, join our, join us, join our um, people, our family that are working with the same mindset. You know, we're not trying to bring strife, envy, cause division. We all are working towards, I mean, those that are working towards the same goal. Come on over. Join us on livingbranch.app. Um, and interact, you know, comment, do a like, share a post. Make sure you go there and you I'll repost it so you don't have to look so hard, but share your experience with uh, concerning the Ruach and how you've experienced the Ruach so we can encourage others. And if you would like to support us, you can do so through Cash App. You can do so through PayPal. And check the live stream. There's actually a um, donation button in the live stream. So whatever the Father puts on your heart to um, to support us, you know, follow his instruction. All right, Miss Baca, we've made it through another wonderful lesson. Very encouraging. I told you it's going to be encouraging today, you know, because many a lot needed. You know, people are faced with uh, sickness, discouragement, situations. Sometimes you don't know what people go through or what they're facing with. Now, if you're facing what you're facing because of unrighteousness, you know, only thing I can tell you in that particular case, get it right. Get yourself right. But if it's just the process of doing his will, keeping his purpose, and trying to walk things out, you know, this message today was for you to stay connected, to draw on the resource of the Ruach. That's what it's for, to encourage you. Hallelujah. So we we just say Shabbat Shalom again to all of our family that's in the chat. We appreciate you. Those that, you know, gave a comment or two, even if you just said Shabbat Shalom, I appreciate you for doing that. All right, Ms. Pakawa, well, we got a little time left. Um, so I pray that you would enjoy Shabbat. And that you would uh, just, you know, enjoy this time. This is Maureen Madad Yahoo saying unto you, Shabbat Shalom. And let's make this the best Shabbat ever. Shabbat Shalom, Miss Pakah.